Welcome to another episode of The Profile. I'm Gary Dunn, and the hot seat tonight, Mr. Les Mead. Hi, Gary. I'm well, Les, yourself? <laughs> well. Thanks for coming. As well in. as can be. As well as can be. Yeah. When well, you're over 50, it gets, you know, gets a bit hairy. Well, I don't know that yet. <laughs> I'll probably get there one day. <laughs> Les, um, where were you born? India. And um, what instruments do you play? None. You're a singer? I'm a singer. I'm a crooner. Yeah, you're a crooner. So what what made you become a crooner to start singing? I used to walk around with the chocolate tray at the Regal Theatre and the movie The Jolson Story came on. Yep. And at that time I was an apprentice electrical fitter and I thought, and my old man was a stickler, you've got to have a trade. Mm. And I saw The Jolson Story and if I can go back a bit, when I was at school, they, want, they wanted me for the choir, and I said, no, I'm not a singer. I'm not singing, I'm into sport, not singing. So they paid for all, because it's gonna be free education if I sang with the choir at school. Yep. So they paid for all my education, and then after I saw the Jolson story, and of course I saw it four or five times every night at the, at the breakfast table one morning, I said, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give away this electrical fitting, and I'm going to become a singer. And they said, a singer? That sissy stuff for girls? <laughs> I said, yeah. So that's where it started. Mm. I went out and started painting my face black and mommy. rock and my baby with a Dixie. You know. And mommy. Mommy. <laughs> my father-in-law, Murray Ogden, I know you know him, uh, he used to get got down on his knees with his mum, you know, before she passed away and sang that song. It was so emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Great music. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so at age 17 in 1956, your first band, Rex Goff Trio. Who was in that band and what was it like in 1956 in the music industry? Well, I had a cousin, Margaret Meesey, who went by the name of Samantha, and she was singing with the trio at the Court Hotel, which was the beer garden in those yep. days. And it was Rex Goff, Murray Mackay on drums, and Brian Bercy on bass. Brian Bercy, there's a name I've heard for a while. Top musicians. Mm. And... Uh, my, my cousin said, you want to try singing? And I said, yeah. And in those days, I was doing Billy Eckstein, Billy Daniels, yep. Vaughan Munro, that type of stuff, you know, and even did Slim Whitman in the days when I could get some falsetto out of this <laughs> croaky voice. Uh, so I did a few weeks there, and then I decided I'll paint my face black, and I'll go out there with the white gloves Rock of Baby and do Jolson. Mm. So I was doing Jolson for a while. And then there were three talent quests on in Perth yep. at the Charles Hotel, the Raffles, and the Willoughby Park. And I entered them and sang the hit of the day, which was Perry Como's Moon Talk. Okay. Yeah. And I won all three of them. And from there, it sort of went on. Yeah. So you're not a rocker, you're a crooner. We know that. So what sort of songs do you sing? What? It's all Sinatra, Dean Martin, mm. Perry Como. A friend of mine, Ross Mitchell, was saying that you know, he remembers you as the Dean, Dean Martin of Perth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had a few nice things to say about you as well. So. Yeah, I, co I copped that tag because yeah. people would say you sound like Dean Martin. Yeah. Uh, and in the beginning, that was good because... Uh, did you have that cigarette and the scotch? And well, you can't have a cigarette now. <laughs> in clubs, I used to do the act with the yeah, cigarette yeah. and everything, but you can't do it now. But uh, it became a rod for my back because I would like to get out there and do something like Old Man River mm. or that lucky old son, nice big ballads. Yes. And you'd say, request, and they'd say, little old wine drinker, <laughs> back where you started from. <laughs> so the, you talked about the talent quests yep. in those days, but... What do you think of the talent quests today, like The Voice or Australia's Got Talent? Is, is, is there any similarities? There's some great voices there? over there, but I don't know where you go after that. Mm. Because, I mean, uh, it didn't do much for me, really, winning talent quests. I went from there, I became the resident singer at the Charles Hotel yep. with the Silver Platters. Yep. It was Billy Van Duncan and Jerry Van Duncan and... Uh, yep. What's the little guy's name? Georgie Mandis yep. on drums. Uh, and that was that was good, but I mean, it's like when you make records. I mean, I've written, 
when I say written, I don't read or write music. Yes. But I've composed 16 songs. But if you don't get airplay, mm. they remain in the cupboard. Yep. You know? Yeah. So I stopped writing songs. Yeah. <laughs> I still write, though, and I've got plenty in the cupboard. But <clears throat> Have you? <laughs> <laughs> See, um, Silver Platters at the Charles, uh, you won an in 1959, a recording contract? Yes, they had... Uh, Who was that with? I got some work once I started singing. I got some work with John Fryer and... Uh, who's the other guy from Channel 7? They used to get a lot of jobs comparing shows and they'd book me to do a spot. Yep. And uh, 6KY yep. and Coca-Cola had a competition on and festival were coming over. And Johnny Fry was the compere. Yep. And I said, how about sticking me in this contest? And he said, but you don't sing rock. They're looking for a rock singer from WA. And I said, yeah, but festival are going to be here. Yep. You never know. They might say, he hasn't won it, but he's worth recording. So to cut a long story short, all the old rockers were there. I won't name them. I don't want to embarrass mm. anyone. And at the end of the show, and they said, the winner is Les Mead. And everyone went, what? <laughs> he's, he's a crony, he's not a rocker. So it went from there. Oh, cool. That sounds like a great story. So in 1960, a year after that, you, you moved to Sydney and you auditioned for Greece and Jesus Christ Superstar? Well, I went to Sydney and I thought I had to go to Sydney to fulfill my contract with Festival Records. Yep. It was for only one song. Yep. We ended up recording three. But without airplay, it just didn't happen. And there was an agent there, June Evans, who heard me singing. In fact, she heard, do you know Carter Edwards? No. Nope. Ted Carter used to be with oh, the four spots. Ted Carter, yeah. Uh, and there was another young bloke from New Zealand, Johnny Rayner. <coughs> and she wanted to book us. Now, she normally books just for actors, for Home and Away yep. and that type of thing. But she said, I'd like to manage you three guys. And I said, yeah, why not? She rang up one day where we was at a, uh, uh, where we lived, uh, and she said, or the woman who was running the guest house said, June Evans wants to talk to Carter. So he went down and spoke with her, and then he came up and he said, Johnny, she wants to talk to you. So he went down there, and they came back, and I said, does she want to talk to me? And they said, no. And I said, what's it all about? And they said, they want us to go and... Uh, rehearse or audition for Greece. So I went down and I found her and I said, I sing. And she said, yeah, but you don't sing rock. And I said, you haven't heard me. I knew one rock number, which was Oh Boy, mm. the Buddy Holly thing. Yep. So she said, all right, I'll send you along. There's some speaking parts in there. You might be able to get a speaking part. So I got down there and they went through all the singers and they wrapping up the band. And I said, what about me? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm a singer. They said, oh, they haven't got you down here as a singer. And I said, yeah, well, I sing. And they said, so he told the piano player, he said, do you mind just give this guy a run through? So I got up there and did Oh Boy. Now, I normally, I'm very still on stage. I just do the pericoma, just shuffle mm. there and sit on a stool or something, you know. Yeah. But for that, I threw myself around like I'd never have before. <laughs> and they went, great. And I said, Oh, okay. And I said, now, can you give us a bit more teeth? And I said, you want the Kirk Douglas, Burt Lancaster. <laughs> and I said, oh, magic. So the next thing I get a call from June Evans the next day, and she says, what did you do? I said, sang a song. She said, they want you for a part, which I think the name of the part was Konecki. I don't know. So I said, no, I don't want it. She said, what? I said, no, I don't want it. This is one of my regrets. Okay. I knocked back Greece. And... Uh, I said, I'm a crooner. I want to get out there and mingle with the people. I don't want to be up on stage yeah. singing one song seven nights a week, you know. Next thing I get a call from her and she said, you wouldn't do Greece, but they'd like you to go and have a look at Jesus Christ Superstar because, uh, oh, I wrote his name down there so I wouldn't forget it. Um no on my list. Oh, on your list. <laughs> oh, let me have a look. I'm not used to anyone else's list, only ours. Yeah, so. that's the name, Reg Livermore. Reg Livermore. Reg oh, Livermore, Reg Reg Livermore, Reg. Livermore yeah. was playing the part of Herod. Yeah. And they said, he's leaving, we want you to do Herod. So I went there and I was knocked out with the show, it was great. But he played at camp. 
Mm. Turn my water into mm. wine, you know, and I thought, hey, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I knocked that one back too. Yeah. And I don't know, in reflection, maybe I should have taken the parts, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, well, life is what it is. So talk to me about the celebrity club. Sorry when I came that. back from Sydney in 72 or whatever it was, uh, this butcher wanted a, somewhere where he can go and drink after hours with his mates. So he had a little place out in East Victoria Park, which he converted into a nightclub. And he had the Ed Peters trio on there, which was Ed Peters, Murray Mackay and Alex DeVries yep. on bass. And uh, we started off there just as a band singer, but he then had a fallout with his manager and he asked me to manage the celebrity club, which I did for a couple of years. And I hired a girl called Joy Mulligan, mm. top singer. Mm. But she did a lot of scat singing. And Arthur Boland, the owner, would come in with his mates late at night, complete with bloodstained, <laughs> what's the name? <laughs> and he, he heard Joy doing one of her numbers and she did the old Ella Fitzgerald type scat stuff. Yep. And she came to the bar and he said, that was good singing, but pity he'd forgot the words. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you bit hard you that, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. after I finished with Celebrity Club, well, I got an invite to go over to Romano's. Yeah, that was 1975, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. So you were an MC at Romano's? Yeah, I used Bruno to. Bruno and, and... Yeah, Sammy. And Sammy. Bruno. And, yeah, Ray Walker. Ray Walker. And, oh, what a good guitarist he is. Mm. In oh. fact, I came over here with Still going. Mm. Is he? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I can't, he must be nearly as old as me. Well, I was talking to Brenton Fostyke the other day, and he's putting something together, and he's saying Ray's playing guitar and that. And, you know, so he's... Well, with Ray, I came over with these charts, which were mass-produced by this guy. You know, everyone, what, what song do you want? Yeah, I got it. What key, you know? Mm. And I came over with that, and I think I was just doing a little old wine drinker, and Ray got me aside one night and he said, do you mind if I do a couple of fills? And I said, yeah, be careful with your fills because if you go off the beaten track, I get lost. Yeah. You know, if you go to a jazz thing, <laughs> I go, where are we, Sammy? <laughs> you know? So. Sammy would always bring you back in. Oh, yeah, he? yeah. Go, Here we go, lads. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I'm still that way. I can't, I can't follow jazz at all. Yeah. But uh, Ray just did a few little different things, and he made the song. Perfect. You know, yeah. Little Old Wine Drinker became yeah. classic. Must get Sammy on the show. Yes, so I will talk, talk to him. him. Sammy, Bruno, yeah. Clem Croft. Yeah. You yeah. haven't had Clem on. Yeah, I think Al. Al's tried Clem a few times, haven't you? And he told me he's tried, but you know, yeah. I'll get him. Yep. No, no worries. So. Um, who was, you know, obviously in Romano's you work with lots of different people. What, what was the, the hardest act? The hardest to act? With? <laughs> Is it, have you got one or everyone's got a story about? No, I believe that uh, Alan's brother or cousin or someone has a favourite artist, Kamal. Oh, you're talking about Gary Simpson? Is that who? He, yeah, he, that's Al's brother, and he always says, uh, "Why are people so unkind?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he probably thinks that about me. I blocked him on Facebook. Anyway, that's another story. Um. <laughs> well, when when we uh, when I was at Romano's, if they had a, a singer on, I would come out and tell a few gags, and then which I pinched off Johnny Borg. He was yep. a great comedian, and uh, then the singer would come on. Uh, Sorry, the comedian would yep. come on. When they had a singer on, I would sing one song and then tell a few gags and then bring them on. And I said, here he is, come out. Nothing. So I said, here he is, come out. I said, give us another song, Sammy. So we did another song and I could see him in the foyer. Mm. So when we finished that song, I said, just a second. I went over there and he said, oh, the Alberto, the manager, the owner. He said, Kamal won't go on. I said, why not? I don't sing after singers. <laughs> I don't follow any singer. No. And I said, oh, you're joking. So I rattled off a few of his songs, the wind, they call the wind Mariah and a couple of other things that he used to sing. And I said, don't worry, mate, I know them, I'll sing them. 
So we finally got him on. Yeah. But uh, he had a handshake like a wet fish. Yeah. Okay, a wet fish. Yeah. So <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, so Kamal wasn't very well to work. But I worked with. That's probably Harris. where we got that saying from. He met you and said, way up people's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I worked with Harry Seacombe. Oh, right. He's Lovely a, guy. Yeah. But before each show, he would drink a small bottle of pink champagne. Okay. That's why he always went on. <laughs> mm. you know, he was he was pretty well done. Mm. Laney Kazan was another good yep. act. Uh, there were a lot of them, right. but, you know. Yeah, lots of people yeah. worked with it. But it's funny, when I first went to Sydney, I thought, right, a couple of years and then the world. Yes. <laughs> when, I got, when I got over there, the first show I did, a young bloke had just come over from, well, I was the same age. He'd come over from New Zealand, Ricky May. Oh, wonderful. And the boss of the RSL club came up and he said, right, and he'd seen me on telly. And he said, so we'll have Ricky May on first and then we'll have the jugglers and then you. And I thought, closing the show, you know. Ricky May went out and sang, and I thought, how the hell do you follow that? That's, <laughs> you that's right. I mean, he's he was, pretty, he pretty was good. great. Yeah. And when he came out into the nice guy, he came out in the change room while the jugglers were on. And I said, mate, you've got more talent in your little finger than I have in my whole body. How do I follow that? And he said, just get out there and do your thing. Mm. And when I came back, he said, I'd like to sing like you. Wow. Which was, you know. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't like to sing like you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I heard you do Satchmo on Saturday night. <laughs> Don't go any further. <laughs> okay, all right. So you work with Will Alps and Big Band. Yeah, um, well, I did a few shows with Will, like the yep. Cottesloe Civic Centre and the Government House and that type of thing. And then he had uh, had to do a commercial for a new estate that was opening up East Fremantle Way. It was called Somerville. Yep. And he said, we'd like to do a take on Summertime, and we got someone who sings a bit like Sinatra, and he said, yeah, I'll get Les, uh, you know, Summerville and the living is easy. That sort of thing. <laughs> I'm too young to remember that. Um, <laughs> in 1981, you moved to the nightclub, K-N-I-G-H-T, and we've interviewed Peter Harry's and- Peter Harry's nightclub. And we've interviewed Rod Christian, and yeah, so- Yeah, in those a, days, a was Morris that. Hardy on organ. Yeah. Um, Larry Mason on drums, and Rod wasn't on guitar, he was on bass. Bass, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, Very talented. When man. I first went to Peter's, I used to just come in and do a half-hour spot in between, because they used to get dressed up in different outfits. It'll be clowns, it'll be mm. cowboys, whatever it is. Peter's the, out there, isn't he? The theme. Yeah, yeah, Peter comes out and compares yeah. the thing. Mm. And then he asked me, would I join in with the the theme of the thing. So then I ended up dressing up as a clown and mm. all that sort of thing. Did you enjoy that sort of thing? Yes and no. Uh, I'd rather do my own thing. Yeah. You know. But uh, we had Peter Pacini dubbed in there a few weeks. Nice guy, Peter. And uh, they wanted a song about a clown and I knew one which Dickie Valentine used to do, The Clown That Cried. And he said, I'd never heard of it. So I just sang him a few bars and he put some chords down and we used to do it. Mm. Wow. Yeah, Peter was very good. It's really off the cuff in those days, but wasn't it, compared yeah. to what it's yeah. like now? Well, that's, that's the beauty of, see, see, now I'm stuck with backing tracks. Yes. Start there, finish there, you know. Whereas with a band, you can stop and start talking to the people and yeah. tell a gag or something like that and come back again, mm. you know. And it was a lot easier to work. So well, I, when I say easier to work, because I like to work the crowd. Yes. I mean, I told Kamal, I said, mate, you sing to the people, not at them. Because mm. he used to get up there and say, this is me, you know. Mm. He did all right, but. <laughs> Singing to him. He made more money than yeah. I did. <laughs> so I was going to ask you how has the music changed these days, but I just think you answered it there. And so how do you find work as a crooner in Perth these days? What? Not easy. No. Because uh, they'd rather have a guitar player with a terrible voice yep. than crooner with backing tracks. Mm. So you, 
So that's what you do? That's what I do. Mm. I just work with backing tracks. Yeah. Very rarely with a band. Mm. And in the old days, you know, when when I had about 300 numbers in my repertoire, now it's down to about 60, which I just keep repeating, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. at each show. And I used to know the keys I did it in. Yeah. Although I don't read or write music, but mm. I used to find out what the key was so I could tell someone, yeah. you know. So what would be the favourite three songs you perform? Have my Way. My Way. Which my mother said was written for me because I was a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody loves somebody sometime. Yeah. That's Amore. Mm. They're songs that I can communicate with the mm. people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's my style. I like yeah. to get in among the people, give them the microphone. And if someone's better than I am, I take it away. <laughs> <laughs> quickly. <laughs> no, quickly. no, actually, I, I just give them the mic and walk away. <laughs> and they go on. But it's good. It's, you know, it gets the people in. Mm. Can you talk to me about jazz music? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> I just jazz got this has written got me here. totally confused, yeah. mate. You know, uh, that's what I'm saying. Sammy had to keep bringing me back. <laughs> bringing me back. <laughs> There was one song, uh, I can't remember what it was, but they went into this introduction and I picked up a note and I sang the whole song flat. And Sammy was going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And I said, what was that? I had another incident where we used to always go out and open with everybody loves somebody sometimes. And I went out there and I had one of those blank moments. Mm. Oh, you couldn't? Everybody loves. It, it starts with bloody everybody. I know. <laughs> Sometimes. I went out there and they flew me. And I said, how did that start again? <laughs> and he said, everybody loves. I said, oh, right, okay. <laughs> so you have these moments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, funny, isn't it? <laughs> so you've done loads of TV appearances, telethon, a pillathon. Yeah, started with uh, In Perth Tonight. Yep. With Harry Buck's orchestra. Wow. Um and then Spotlight, which again was with Harry mm. Black's orchestra. And then we went to, um, we did the Jeff Newman show. He oh. swapped from seven to nine and had the Jeff Newman show. Yeah, I remember Jeff Newman as for well. For a couple of years. Mm. And that's when I met Perry Como because they brought, a guy, brought out a guy to produce the Jeff Newman show. Yep. And uh, he heard a couple of my songs that I'd written. And one particular song, he said, oh, that would be a great song for Perry Como and he's here. Would you like to meet him? I said, well, wow, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> so we went in there and he spoke with Kerry, uh, Perry Como and spoke with, his, spoke with his manager more than Perry, you know. But he said, yeah, it sounds like a good song. He said, but look, don't hold your breath because we've got thousands of songs coming in every week and we just pick a few for him to, to record, yep. you know. And, of course, I never heard any more. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another song in the sh yeah, in the. In the in the cupboard? Yeah, no worries. Perry Como was the first concert you went to, wasn't it? The it's the only concert I've been to. Really? Yeah. I don't like going to concert. I, I'd prefer to go and see the local groups or bands that are yeah. playing. And my my theory is that I go there and I watch people perform, Yeah. not to try and copy what they're doing, but to take out anything that I see jars on people. Yeah. If someone does something or sings something that jars on the audience I think I'll use that no I mustn't do that oh okay you know what I mean mm. that's it's so all about communication entertainment centre so Perry Como was it packed 8,000 oh, people yeah. or what yeah, yeah. and we it had been to, in the 70s was it yeah. Yeah. yeah and when I was at Romano's they brought out a guy named uh, <laughs> he was a he was a comedian but he was also sang and played a bit of banjo. And uh, she said, Lieta, who used to run the place virtually, she went to see his rehearsal. And of course, he would get the band to start and say, yeah, OK, yeah, OK. And she said, what, what's he doing? He's doing nothing. <laughs> She's said, doing nothing. <laughs> He'll be all right, you know. Uh, so she said to Sammy, she said, I want... There was a Malgrave too, which was Ed Peters' sons, Graham and Malcolm. All right, yeah. The Malgrave too. She said, I'll get them 
to open the show as a warm-up for him, and then Les. But please rehearse some more numbers with Les, because when Ken Goodwin, All right. comedian. Yeah, English. Right. Yeah, yeah. But very funny. Yeah. Said nothing but made you laugh. Mm. You yeah. Know? And Sammy said, why do you want to rehearse numbers with Les? Les because the place is going to be packed with Ken Goodwin fans. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. He walked out on stage and they stood, stood up and applauded for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, settle down, settle down. <laughs> that was his catchphrase. Yeah. Yeah, funny incidents happened. Yeah, he had that really high voice, Ken, didn't he, when he talked? It was like really... No, he was he was a bit like Bing Crosby. Mm. Yeah. Okay. My memory must have faded me. So, <laughs> um, the first single you bought? The first single mm. was Vaughan Munro, yep. Ghost Riders in the Sky. Wow. And the first album you bought? Probably a Dean or not. Because <laughs> by that stage I was well into Dean yep. Martin. Now, yeah. while, while I didn't try to copy him, I think the way I like to phrase a song mm. is similar to what he does. Yes. That's why people were saying, like I used to lag behind and come in at the, after the beat type yeah. of thing, you know? So would it be fair to say um, you, you probably influences of like Al Jolson, where you talk oh, about Al Jolson Dean Martin? Was definitely the, yeah. the first one. But I used to like singers like Billy Eckstein and Billy Daniels yeah. and those guys were singing jazz. Mm. But I liked their voice, you know. Mm. They had timber in their voice. Yeah. And I used to go out there as a young kid and try and, no one but you, <laughs> try and drop <laughs> my voice to get a yeah. Billy Eckstein type sound, sure. you know. Yeah. But no, Al Jolson started it all. Have you had any other jobs throughout your life, at least? A salesman. I worked for Evans TV Corner, wrote a couple of jingles for him mm. and recorded them. Uh, and then I joined Combined Insurance Company of America which was real hard sell type thing. Mm. And I went out and did that for a few years, uh, still singing, mm. and ended up being the manager here in WA for Combined Insurance. But then I gave that away and just became a singer. Yep. I wish I could do just that. Became just became a singer. Just became a singer. I was always broke. Yes. <laughs> you need a day job. <laughs> <laughs> My mother would tell me that. Yeah, uh, same, same. So do you have a favourite band? Was there a band that you liked more than anything else? Or? No. No? No, I wasn't into bands. I would go there to watch acts. Okay. And try and learn from them. Mm. Uh, so I wasn't really looking at the band side of it, you know? Mm. I mean, in those days you had all the... Uh, what were the big bands? In those days I wasn't alive. I'm, I'm young. You got to tell me. No, no, I'm only <laughs> fifty. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you were stranded on a deserted island, well, it's only you. What girl happen. would I take there? No, 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 no. You have for all the show. <laughs> <laughs> What album would you take? Dean Martin, Sinatra. Okay. Both of them together would be good. Is it, did they do an album together? No, no, no. So you can't have. No, Dude, but you can only have one. <laughs> I can only have one. I'd have to go for Dino. Okay. So what was it that impressed you about Dean Martin the most? What? His casual approach, which is what I try to do. I'm not trying to copy Dean Martin. I just like the way, I mean, his, I wish they'd bring the Dean Martin show back again, but that was a classic. It mm. ran for 10 years and he was just magic. He just mm. came on there and he did it. Now, Sinatra's magic too because I remember one Will Upson was a drummer who moved to Sydney and uh, he asked me to come and watch or would I like to come and watch Sinatra rehearsing and I said yeah so we're rehearsing with this 30 piece orchestra or whatever it is and all of a sudden Sinatra went oh trumpet number two you flap Wow. I thought, wow. Who was that? <laughs> hey, excuse me. <laughs> you know. Wow, he was that good, huh? He was that good. But Will said, I've got a couple of tickets to go and see him. Would you like them? And I said, yeah. So I took them and then I found out I had a job on. So my young brother who was working there uh, 
Mike. I said, would you like to go and see Sinatra? He said, I'll be watching you. What do I want to go and watch Sinatra for? <laughs> but he took the tickets and he went. And he said, geez, I'm glad I went to that. Mm. He said, when he came out, I could feel the hair on my, stand up on my back. He said, because there he was, the guy that done all this, made movies and all that sort of thing. And he said, and he was great. He was like you. He just stood around and mm. sang, occasionally sat on a stool. But He had the greatest sense of timing, I think. You know, just the way he sang, the way he phrased. Well, I heard from someone, but he never sang in tune, mm. never sang in time. Mm. No, there was always, there was always somewhere floating around. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I saw a few live things with him, but everyone followed him, if you like. Right. You know, right. He, had, he had the... Well, what, that's what the bands are supposed to do, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. But, you know, I, I always make a point of thanking the bands after I've done a show yep. because... My old man was an engineering draftsman. And when I started singing, he said, you go out for an hour and make more money than I do as an engineering draftsman. Mm. And the same thing with music. It's changed now, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The yeah. engineering draftsman now makes more in an hour than <laughs> we do in a year. So. But musos, they study their instrument, they practice, you know, they become proficient in it. Mm. And they get out there and sit up the back and I always say, it's great to come out in the spotlight and get all the attention and the applause, but I'd like you to thank the guys mm. who work the hardest a lot, the band. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've always been in the band and, and um, singers get it easy, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say that too, wouldn't you? <laughs> they get the cream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the cream of the girls, everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> of all the girls. <laughs> so your favourite TV show growing up, what would that have been? All the Westerns. Gunsmoke and mm. Maverick. Bonanza. And yeah, I was a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> I loved cowboy. In fact, I auditioned for um, the Marlboro Man. Had the old cowboy suit on, hat and all that sort of thing. Even bought a holster with the gun and everything. And I got pretty close, except when they found out I couldn't ride a horse. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That's it. Yeah, you were gone, eh? I lost a few jobs like that because <laughs> it was when I was in Sydney and did I tell you about, uh, oh, Digby Wolf? No, please, please tell me. Well, Keith Walsh wanted me to join Review 61, which was a show they were going to put on with Digby Wolf comparing it. Yep. And he was going to get three girls and three guys and they were going to sing background type music for different artists and occasionally one of us would get a chance to come out and do a spot. So he said, would you like to be in it? I said, oh yeah. So we got there and he said, right, here's your part, here's your part. <laughs> and I said, what's this? <laughs> he said, don't you read music? I said, no. He said, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Well, because you couldn't read fly shit. Yeah. Mm. Well, when I compose my songs, I just make up the lyric and the song and then give it to someone else. Like And they would yeah, yeah. chart it for They'd you. They'd write or, the charts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you have any unfulfilled ambitions, please? Not really. Just a few regrets of things yeah. that I should have done. Yep. Yeah. It was like when I was playing hockey and I made the state team in 50, 58 and 59. And then in 60, the Olympic Games are at Rome. And uh, in those days, WA were very strong. Mm. And out of the 20 or 22 players that they would take over, you'd at least have 15 from WA. Mm. And I was playing in a team here, CBC Old Boys, Christian Brothers College Old Boys. And we had Eric Pierce, Gordon Pierce, Julian Pierce, Kevin Carton, Kirsty Courtney five in that one team. All I had to do was run up and down the field at centre forward and look good. Mm. Yeah. So I had a good chance and I got down to the last 30 selection and this contractor won at festival. And they said, you've got to come to Sydney <laughs> straight away. <laughs> Conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah. And my old man said, you're mad. The Olympics is once in a lifetime. Mm. I said, yeah, but I could be a star. Mm. You know. So I dropped out of the, out of the selection 
squad. And the guy who played centre forward went to the Olympics, Don Martin. Now, that doesn't mean a thing. Is he related really. to Dean? Hmm? Is he related? <laughs> no, no. no, no, he didn't sing at all. Okay. He was a great hockey player. Mm. See, I mean, I could have gone over there and played crap. Mm. He went over there, proved himself, got to the Olympics, you know. Didn't we have the Commonwealth Games here in 62, Perth, or somewhere around there? Around there, yeah. yeah. I remember that. That was out at... Perry Lakes. Wembley. Perry, Perry, Perry Lakes, Lakes, yeah. yeah. Not Perry Como. No. Um, <laughs> you were, we had singers, got Como. Singers Como and sport. Como is next to South Perth, and <laughs> yeah. Perry could have been... Yeah, yeah. It's a bit silly, isn't it? So, did you collect anything, Les? <laughs> no. Nothing? No. I'm very boring, really. Yeah. I don't go out to shows. I don't like going out. My wife says, can we go out to dinner? And I'll say, why? You're going to go out there and pay $20 for a steak? We can get it here for three. It's <laughs> not about that, Les. It's about <laughs> the moment of enjoying going out with your wife. It's about those date nights. Yeah, date nights or anything like that? or you know. No, only when we go to family. Mm. I enjoy getting together with family. Tell me how many yeah. kids and grandkids you have and how many great-grandkids. I got six kids. Yep. I got twenty-one grandchildren. Wow. And twelve, I think, going on fourteen great grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, did so, so it's going to be a good party on the twenty-first mm. of May. Yeah. So you're uh, you turn eighty, I believe. Yeah. Fifty. Fifty. Sorry. <laughs> that makes me twenty. Eighty going on fifty. <laughs> <laughs> And they're all coming? They're, are they all in Perth or are they? Most of them are in Perth. My brother Mike is still over in, in uh, Brisbane. Yeah. Now Mike went over there and he got himself, um, he was a good friend of, um, uh, what's the kid that sings Pegasus? Ross, Ross, Ross. Ross Ryan. And they used to be cameramen here in Perth. And I, I regress there. When I was at seven, there was a guy called Peter Wynn who used to produce and yeah. shows, and he wanted to do a Dean Martin type thing with me. And we went to the old North Perth Hotel, which is now a service station. <laughs> and Everyone we looked needs at, petrol. And looked at the location, <laughs> and he said, yeah, this is perfect, we could do this and do this now. And then he took it to seven, and they said, why would we pay thousands of dollars to put on Lesby and Clem Croft and Peter Anderson and etc. Yeah. When we could get the Dean Martin show for a couple hundred bucks a week. Oh, uh, from yeah. America. Yeah. By the time it comes to us, we're paying nothing for it, yeah. you know. Uh, so that fell in the hole. Support your local musicians. Quite, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, getting back to Mike, Ross Ryan had this hit with Pegasus and he went over to Sydney or to Brisbane. And so I am Pegasus, by no means horse. That's it. That's it. And uh, Didn't get that prior to that, he was just singing around in little mm. coffee bars here, and they put him on as the uh, support act for Roy Orbison, and that shot him up. Wow. But... Uh, the big O. Yeah. So anyway, Mike goes over there to join Ross, and they got back onto their cameras, and uh, they were doing a show called Now You See It. It was a kid show. And they asked Mike to sit in the chair, like you were doing, and they were going to interview. <laughs> Don't be offended. It's a good oh. chair. So it's not as comfortable as yours. You got the comfy chair. Oh, have I? Yeah. So uh, they said, Mike, they'll be interviewing you, and he just sat up there with his legs up and was answering their questions. And when they finished, they said, We want you to host the show. Wow. So he rang me up and he said, hey, big brother, how long you wanted your own show on telly? I got one. <laughs> it's a bit like me. I had to audition for this. <laughs> so, yeah, next story. No, they couldn't find anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate. <laughs> I'm the only one who showed up. So what would you put on your gravestone? I did it my way. Frank Sinatra? Mm. Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't put everybody... Maybe as a little thing underneath. Yeah. He also did Dean Martin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he says, my dear old mother said my way was written for me. Yeah, because uh, I've had a few problems with 
marriages. Oh. Well, I've got my third wife now. Now, we met at the nightclub in 82. Wow. She was working on the till. I was singing and I took her out and we, the spark was there, but she was married and I was married. Mm. So it never went any further. Then she moved up to Shark Bay, which she loves. And 40 years later, after two of my marriages went zoom, mm. she, she heard that I had a stroke it wasn't bad. A couple of guys that were in my same ward, they were, you know, history. I just lost a bit of balance and I don't drink. Mm. But she came down to watch the show because a daughter unknown to me was on my Facebook and she came down to watch the show and we got together again. Wow. So 40 years later, we got married. Wow. We started on a lot of good stuff. So when so you, you could have had a couple more of my kids. Yeah. So <laughs> do you, do all three of them get together with all the kids and is it all? No, the first one died. Okay. Sorry. Uh, but I lost an adva I lost a uh, a chance to go to Canada because at that time I was separated from her. I was paying maintenance, and they had a scout out from the cavalry stampede. It's a big thing they do yeah. in Canada every year. And he said, I'd like you, they used to go out and get people from different parts of the world mm. to come and perform. And he said, I'd like you to come to the cavalry. And uh, I said, yeah, but then the wife said, he's paying maintenance, I don't want to leave the country. <laughs> so, so they put a kibosh on that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, such is life. C'est la vie. Yes. <laughs> Liz, what, what clip are we going to hear from you in a second? I think it's Lucky Old Son. Lucky Old Son. Nice ballad, but yeah. it was done at the nightclub. <clears throat> and as I say, I like to gag, <clears throat> which you can when you've got a band. Yes. So there's a little bit of patter before the cool. before the song. I look forward to watching that in a <laughs> second. Look, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. It's wonderful to listen to your journey in life, and thanks for sharing it with us and, and our viewers. So, my pleasure. Viewers, please don't forget. Mark's just been on and on about you have to press the like button don't you mark yes www.theprofile.com.au press like subscribe and then you'll keep mark happy and we won't get all the grumpy things out of him all the time so um thanks for being with us les pleasure really appreciate you coming in thank you mate les mead and we'll see you next time and enjoy the clip thank you <laughs> Up in the morning, and so where's the song? I'm not being rude. Well, it's nice work if you can get it. Yeah, I was a little Confucius was a nice man. Confucius say, boy who loses key to girlfriend's flat get that new key. Up in the morning, I'm in the gym. Work like a devil for my penny But that lucky old son Ain't got nothing to do But roll around heaven
Procopy, we can transfer audio to CD, make CD, DVD and Blu-ray copies, transfer video to DVD, Blu-ray or HD, digitise slides and photos and supply custom USBs. You can see more details at procopy.com.au or call us on 08 9375 3902 for more information.